Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, I'm Jasmine, thank you for joining me. Today we're diving into the incredible land of fire and ice, which is Iceland. I'm going to be sharing a detailed travel guide covering the best places to visit year-round, as well as ways to visit Iceland on a budget, as Iceland can be very expensive. So whether you have a stopover in Iceland, or are planning to spend a couple of weeks, there is certainly no shortage of attractions and interesting experiences that you can enjoy. Before we start, let's talk about the logistics. Finding affordable flights is key, and websites like Skyscanner, Google Flights, and even Iceland Air are amazing tools for snagging good deals. I will put links to these sites in the description. Be flexible with your travel dates, as even just selecting a different day of the week could make a big difference. And you might just score a budget-friendly ticket to this beautiful Ireland. Now for the transport around the island, I would seriously recommend hiring a car, as taxi costs can really eat up your spending budget, you can get buses around the island, which are a lot cheaper. However, if you are anything like me, then being able to go where I want, when I want, and to have the freedom of just hopping into your own car, then car hire is the most preferable option here. It might cost you around $100 to $200 a day to hire a car, but it can be as little as $300 for the whole week depending on the type of car you want. If you do decide to go with taxis, then you can expect a journey from the airport to Reykjavik to cost around $100 to $150, for example. Okay, let's get into the best places to visit. Reykjavik is the vibrant capital. Not only is it a hub of Icelandic culture, but you'll find a buzzing nightlife scene and some fantastic local food to try. Now, let's talk about the Golden Circle. It is an amazing experience and a must-visit route, which loops from Reykjavik into central Iceland and back and takes you through some of the most amazing sights in central Iceland. You also have the iconic Gullfoss waterfall, the geothermal wonders of Geysir, and the historic Thingvellir National Park, which is absolutely beautiful. You can also go whale watching or visit the amazing picturesque fjords. And I would highly recommend visiting the Blue Lagoon. I think it's safe to say that visiting the Blue Lagoon in Iceland is on just about everyone's bucket list. For those who haven't heard of it before, it's a stunning geothermal spa and is ran like most other day spas you would find around the world. There's accommodation there, as well as saunas, restaurants, and cafes. However, if you are on a budget, the Blue Lagoon can be expensive, but if you want a little treat and are into spas, then a cost of around 54 dollars is worth it in my opinion. A good time to visit is on the day you leave before you head to the airport, as it is only 20 minutes away from there a great way to ensure you're relaxed for your flight. You can get tours of Iceland, which if you aren't too concerned about budget, they can be a great way to see the whole island without the hassle of planning it all yourself. You can find tours which last the whole week for around $1,000 to $1,500 depending on the tour, but this does include everything including food, so it can be a good option. Be sure to book in advance for the best prices for tours. In the summer, venture to the south coast for jaw-dropping black sand beaches like Reynes Viara, in the winter, this region transforms into a winter wonderland, perfect for chasing the elusive northern lights. Don't worry, I'll share some tips on the northern lights later. Now, let's talk about the Icelandic cuisine. While some traditional dishes might surprise your taste buds, don't leave without trying the famous Icelandic hot dog or the Icelandic yogurt skyr. So how expensive is the food here? Well, it isn't cheap. If you want to go out for a restaurant meal, you can be looking at prices from $20 to $60 upwards for one dish. For budget-friendly options, explore local markets and food trucks and take advantage of their delicious tap water. It is free everywhere and honestly so fresh. Alcohol around Iceland is just plain expensive. There's no way around it. To save money here, I would buy some alcohol from the duty-free stores on arrival and drink that before you heat out. Here are some quick tips to save money on your food while in Iceland. Buy food at the supermarkets, and if you have an apartment such as an Airbnb, then you can easily cook a delicious meal or take a picnic out whilst exploring. Bring a reusable water bottle and even a thermos with tea or coffee. Book accommodation with free breakfast included. And lastly, don't drink the alcohol. It will honestly save you a ton. When it comes to accommodation, Iceland offers a range of options. From budget-friendly hostels and guest houses to unique stays like cute cottages and cozy cabins. Websites like HostelWorld, Booking.com, and Airbnb are fantastic resources. If hotels are your thing and you don't want to use Airbnb, you can expect to pay around $150 to $200 per night for a hotel in Reykjavik. Of course, the prices will vary considerably, and you can find cheaper hotels if booking in advance or in November as opposed to June, for example. 
Consider visiting during the off seasons for more affordable rates and fewer crowds. Also a top tip on reducing your costs. Visiting Iceland with some friends will drastically reduce your spend, as you can split the costs of your accommodation between your group. If you do want to travel alone, it will cost a fair amount, even if you are using the more budget options. Now, let's delve into the differences of Iceland's seasons. In the summer, the midnight sun means you can explore well into the evening, while winter brings long nights with only around five hours of sun during the day. But this is also the only time when you have the possibility of witnessing the northern lights. If you'd rather avoid the snow, visit Iceland during September to October and April to May. During this time of the year, the room rates also drop and you'll find fewer crowds. Now for the northern lights, I told you I'd share some tips later on. If you are visiting Iceland during winter, you won't want to miss the possibility of seeing this natural phenomenon. For the best chances, visit between September to March, head away from city lights, and consider joining a northern lights tour for expert guidance, if you have the budget. Apps like Aurora Forecast can help you track the activity. Try not to focus your whole trip on seeing the northern lights, as they are not guaranteed and you might be disappointed. Where would be the best place to see them? Well, as long as there is darkness, clear skies, and the activity is there, then you can see them almost anywhere you go in Iceland. If you are looking for accommodation near to where you might see the northern lights, I would recommend somewhere outside of the towns. If you do manage to witness them during your trip, you really will be amazed by how magical it looks in real life. So there you have it, your guide to experiencing the wonders of Iceland. From the lively streets of Reykjavik to the breathtaking landscapes of the Golden Circle and beyond, this country really is a treasure trove of unforgettable moments, and it doesn't have to break the bank. I hope this guide helps you plan your Icelandic adventure, and if you have any questions or tips to share, drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this, giving you inspiration and the best tips for your next trip. Let me know in the comments where you would love to see next. Until our next adventure, stay safe. Travel Tribe.